Hello YouTube, I'm The Raging Beard and this is just a little video to show you how invaluable a small little program called Joy to Key um, can be to you as a sim racer or any simulator enthusiast. I can imagine it's quite useful for flight sims uh, using yokes etc. Uh, as I say, it's a tiny little file. Um, it's well free, you can download it free, use it for free, but they do ask that you purchase a license key if you keep on using it. I don't think anything forces you to, but I did. It's like seven dollars or five quid. Just support them, and it's just you know something that's done well uh, deserves to be um, rewarded for. Basically, all it does is take inputs from all your devices, and you can tell them what key on the keyboard um, that translates to. Um, so I'll demonstrate how it works but more importantly how it's useful to us as sim racers especially if you've got an OSW and multiple rims and um, if you're making do without I'll show you why you might want it um, and just basically the ins and outs of just how useful it is okay then so this is joy to key uh, it's pretty simple in its function um, which means it's easy to use um, uh, basically along the top here you can see all the tabs of the various input devices I've got um, unfortunately you can't rename them they're just joystick 1, joystick 2 etc um, and I've got plugged in currently both wheels as in well this this wheel the button plate that's attached to the other wheel they're both permanently connected um, the SNES controller uses a button box Fanatec gear shifter, uh, the foot pedals, the handbrake, it all just stays permanently connected and it picks them all up and obviously the OSW itself. So if I click on the first one, I know the first one is the SNES gamepad. So if I press a button, it highlights what button I'm pressing, button 5, and I have that as the escape key. So basically in, in any uh, sim, I'll whack that button and it'll go to the pause menu or take me back out of a menu and it's always the same. And the button above it I have set as V and control space so that means in a set of Corsa or in project cars or whatever that will always reset my VR view. Um, going on to say joystick, uh, well this wheel I know is number 5. When they're lit up here it means there's an input going on. Um, it, it generally that means there's some sort of analog input or something going in, you don't need to worry about it uh, you can basically ignore things that are permanently highlighted so this one I know gear down is A gear up is Q and this is where it becomes useful okay so I can be in whatever game I'm using paddle shifters for sequential but if I swap into a car that doesn't use paddles, I like to be realistic, it's got a sequential shifter. If I put my Fanatec into shifter mode and look at joystick 3, that's Q and A as well. So on the fly, even in sim on track, I can change between whatever kind of shifter on mode I've got. Um, likewise, you could be on track and or you, well, you come out of track and you change cars to something with a round rim and like I said I like to keep it realistic I can just take this one off put that one on and then again downshift upshift all my buttons and you can do that as I say on track or in sim whereas usually in games you know they don't like to you can't swap USB, unplug and replug USB devices, but these are always plugged in, so that's not a problem. Um, also, the other benefit is obviously, um, say you have, you know, I use this button for crew chief, speaking to crew chief, or, or pit limiter. Well, that that is button nine, as you can see on there. But on the other wheel, button nine could be wherever. But it doesn't matter. You can still put a button in roughly the same place to be C on the keyboard or P for pit limit I use 
So you can have buttons roughly in the same place doing the same function, no matter what number button they correspond to um, in, in their firmware. And this works even though this button plate and that wheel obviously use the same boards, whatever, they show up as exactly the same device. But this always remembers that this one's two and the other one's five. Because what you can do is you can go in options and specify um, that you can specify what number uh, is what joystick. Uh, despite you know, instead of having Windows, uh, you're using the Windows light number, you can specify so it's always the same. Um, so it's very simple. You just literally click the button you want, double click it. And then you can select, you can press the key, multiple combinations of keys, and write in the box what it is, what it does. And there are other functions which I've never needed, so I've never looked into them. Right, so please excuse uh, this part of the video. This is something I wanted to highlight but totally forgot about. So I'm just quickly doing this on the on the phone. Um, so using my button box here which is a SNES controller I've obviously got a d-pad that's why I wanted it really and this is what's so useful in Joy to Key right so my d-pad is essentially the cursor keys on a keyboard which in pretty much every game out there controls menus uh, you know in, in, but I mean both in the game like Project Cars for the uh, in-car management but generally navigating the menus and I've got the little button above it as uh, enter and as that one's already escape that's generally go back out menus so even in virtual rally in uh, um, dirt rally which the menus are awful to control with the mouse um, I can just use completely use the d-pad next to me to do everything in the menus um, so it's just a really useful function I think um, and primarily the reason I wanted this as a, <laughs> a make do button box um, and I'm, I'm yeah I'm really happy with it another useful feature is the profiles you can have multiple profiles uh, this one I, I just generally run with one I remember what everything does in each sim but um, and that, uh, that's just as the default obviously but you could have more you can just click copy or you can create from scratch but you know you can just create copy type, you know call it whatever you want so you could have project cars 2 for example um, and then you could have a set of Corsa and you could have the buttons doing completely something completely different um, but then you could have you know, if you've got flight sims, you can have X-Plane, Aerofly for your yoke. And it's a question of just coming on here and clicking each one. And again, you don't even have to quit your game, whatever you're in. You can just Alt-Tab, come here, click whatever. Um, because you might have different controls per car. Um, you know, if you're going ultra-realistic and you've got some super fancy... F1 wheel has got all your dials and what all over the place. Um, per car, you could have each thing doing whatever it does in real life. Just come here and click between, you know, your McLaren, your whatever. Um, so the amount of um, the the amount of options and the uh, level of customization is, is well, infinite, I suppose. But I just keep things simple. And just have one default, which I guess is probably what I imagine a lot of people would do. But you know, there's there's choices for you. So basically, uh, it's just a, a a great tool for having however many inputs you've got doing either the same thing, like both wheels. I can use both the pedals on both wheels and the sequential shift all doing the same thing. Uh, or it can just make things simple for your button layout, remembering where everything is so that it's the same on all your on your all your inputs. Um, 
and some software can have problems if you've got too many things plugged in it doesn't like it well this sort of solves that because uh, you haven't got to worry about if the game's picking up the joystick exactly it's just got to pick up the keyboard input because um, as far as it knows you're pressing the key on the keyboard so I hope all of that's made sense um, I've tried to <laughs> be simple about it because it is a simple bit of software but very clever and very well done in what it does yeah so as I said about the um, the permanently highlighted stuff that, that is due, like, generally from the analog input so mainly like I know joystick 4 is my pedals is my personal pedal you can see and they're doing stuff I don't really know why they're permanently highlighted like that it doesn't doesn't affect anything it doesn't do anything it's nothing to worry about it doesn't input in games or anything like that yeah and there's uh, well there's all these other options I've not fiddled with um, loads, loads any other. I don't think I've touched any of this. Uh, yeah, start minimised, yeah, and okay. But it's all pretty straightforward. I don't see why you need to feel with any, any of it. The bread and butter of it is load it up, tell it I want that button to do that key, and job done. So, yeah, to me, it's, it's pretty much invaluable. Hence why I think it's worthwhile, you know, paying paying for the key just so they get their their money for it, which is only fair. Um, yeah, definitely, I recommend it. Uh, I'm sure there's other solutions out there that do same sort of thing, but I can't imagine anything does any better because I've got nothing to complain about this. Uh, yeah, so it's a tiny little file. Give it a go for free, then uh, see if it's useful to you.